Hello everyone, and welcome back. I'm the Mechanic Gone Rogue. Welcome to part two of my video series, where I explore what happens when I try to recharge my aluminum air batteries. In my first video, I tested out my battery using salt water, and was able to conclude that, yes, there does seem to be some sort of recharging going on. If you haven't seen that video yet, the link's right above me, so check it out when you can. Today, I'm gonna to be working with my ethylene glycol based DP Technic solvent that I introduced in a previous video. In that video, I noted that it seemed that the battery is functioning without air, which would suggest that a different chemistry is at work other than aluminum oxidizing. Today, not only will I be testing to see if this battery is rechargeable, but I'm also gonna be testing to see if this battery truly doesn't need air to function. To that end, I've made another variation of my battery cell. This style is cylindrical in shape. The aluminum and graphite are rolled onto a spacer, one on the inside and the other on the outside. I used some tape to connect the wires to the electrodes, and I fed those wires through this cap. The idea is that this spacer with the battery electrodes attached will be inserted into the cylinder, which will be filled with electrolyte, effectively isolating them from any air. In addition to my new cell, I will still be using my card style cell, battery test box, and test LED all introduced in part one. Before I start, I want to mention that I do this because I enjoy it, not because I know what I'm doing. As such, I get things wrong sometimes, so take all my videos with a grain of salt. This could be dangerous as well, so don't try what you see in this video at home. My full disclaimers in the video description. Let's start things off with the card cell that I used in part one. Everything is the same except for the electrolyte, which is my ethylene glycol based deep eutectic solvent. The initial voltage is a little higher than the salt water, at about 0.97 volts. Unfortunately, it seems like the amperage output is quite low. It only produces one milliamp and barely lights the test LED. I was able to get the best results by running everything through my test box. Since this barely produces anything to begin with, I'm gonna move straight to recharging. For this, I'm going to once again be using my test box, and it's the same drill as before. The USB port is receiving power from a USB wall adapter rated for 5 volts and 1 amp output. The left switch controls the USB power to the battery, and the right switch controls the battery power to the LED. Let's start charging it. So it is charging at 4.6 volts, and I let it charge for about 30 seconds. It is also producing that same faint crackling noise that my saltwater battery made when it is being recharged. I also want to mention, when I was playing around with the recharge times with this cell, I found that any times over 30 seconds didn't seem to increase the cell power output. So whatever mechanism is taking place here happens very quickly within that first 30 seconds. After letting it charge for a couple minutes, I even noticed some heat starting to build up in the cell, so I didn't try to recharge it beyond that. After the recharge, the results are much better. The cell voltage is sitting at 2.6 volts and produces about 20 milliamps under the load of the test LED. On the downside, it doesn't have that much longevity. I found that after six minutes, the charge is almost completely gone. Now that we know how the battery works when exposed to air, let's move into my cylindrical battery cell to see how it responds when the air is taken away. The initial readings are not very promising. It has a lower voltage reading of 0.76 and there's not even enough amperage flow to light the LED on its own. Recharging does yield similar results as the card battery though. Even as low as 10 seconds charge it produces approximately 2.6 volts and 20 milliamps. The only difference is, is that it too only lasts for about six minutes which is cool, but not nearly as good as the salt water cell from part one. Before I finish things up, there is one more thing I want to investigate, and that is the longevity of these cells versus the longevity of the salt water cells I worked on in part one. A big reason I was interested in deep eutectic solvent was because it looked like it might solve the evaporation issue that I've been having using salt water. With that in mind, the cell has been sitting for about two months. I'm gonna tear it down and see how it's holding up. 
right off the bat, I can see that there is still liquid electrolyte in there. Judging by the crystals of choline chloride on the cell, I'd say that there is some evaporation, but not as much, which is good as it confirms my theory that there would be less evaporation than the saltwater cell. Before tearing the cell down, I checked to see if it would recharge at all, and it would not. Now I can see why. The connecting wires have corroded off. As for the electrodes themselves, I can see they are still largely intact. I had a friend who knows something about this mention to me, that it is possible for air to be absorbed into the battery components. So while it seems the battery is operating without air, it will only operate until the absorbed air is depleted, and that really seems to be the case here. With the electrodes being almost completely intact after two months of sitting, and the performance being inferior to salt water, that is really looking like a strong possibility here. While it's still disappointing that results were less than spectacular, I'm still very happy with this experiment. This charge is even quicker than the saltwater batteries did. Plus, I was able to confirm that the DP Technic solvent doesn't evaporate as quickly as saltwater and still functions in some capacity as a battery electrolyte. Now, I just need to find a way to combine the performance of the saltwater with the durability of the DP Technic solvent. I'm not really sure how to do that right now, but hopefully that's a topic that I can explore in future videos. In the meantime, I'm excited to hear what you guys have to say. Let me know of any ideas you have in the comments section below. Also, thank you for watching. The support that I've received from my viewers over the last year has been far beyond what I've expected. Turns out, there's a lot of kind and smart people out there, and I've really appreciated their feedback. I hope you enjoyed this video as much as I did. If you want to support me in the videos that I make, an easy way to do that is to buy me a coffee through the link in the video description. That's all I have for now. See you next time. MGR signing out.